The year 2018 has proven EA horribly wrong. In 2012, then-president of Electronic Arts Frank Gabu said these words, verbatim, I have not greenlit one game to be developed as a single-player experience. Today, all of our games include online applications and digital services that make them live 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. He went on to state, if you're going to make a game, do it with an open world that's a connected experience where you can actually see other players, that you can cooperate, you can compete, and it can be social. Those iconic words would echo furiously through the years leading up to the present in our industry where solo gaming experiences have been struggling to stay relevant in lieu of these skewed attitudes. What Frank was alluding to was this idea of creating a live gaming environment where games would be transformed into social experiences governed by multiplayer principles and constant required updates. This was commonly referred to as service-based gaming. You guys have probably heard that terminology. And this era was about when the idea of progressive video game development began to take root in modern gaming. Whether it was said or not, the general stance of EA was that they wanted to move all of their single-player games into this realm, as they felt that the industry was moving away from isolated video game play. But was that really the case? Have we moved away from that? Well, today, Sony says absolutely not, claiming that there's a huge audience for games that offer the best in single-player narratives, with stunning gameplay as witnessed by the enormous popularity of both Spider-Man and, of course, God of War. The statement was made by Warwick Light, Vice President of Sony in the UK, during a discussion on how the multiplayer and games as a service movement has impacted their philosophies on the single-player game since 2012. It was an obvious knock to EA's stance on the matter, who has been holding the torch on the idea of turning every single-player game to a live service, and even going so far as to bastardize the former. Yes, we know that EA does not like single-player games, and they will do everything in their power to avoid them at all costs. Just one year ago, the industry was under the impression that perhaps the death of the single-player game was actually a reality, as industry leader EA made this iconic statement that slandered its reputation. And I quote, The industry does not want single-player games anymore, especially linear video games. Holy crap, that is a statement. Those grandiose yet questionably ill-expressed words rocked the industry in 2017 during the cancellation of a single-player Star Wars game, personally that I was very excited about, by the way, by Visceral Entertainment. Acting Chief Financial Officer at the time, Blake Jorgensen, who later left the company, said that the project wasn't financially viable and that the reason for termination was for purely economical reasons. He later on noted that this was due to fundamental shifts in the marketplace, which was a fancy way of saying that there was more money in making a Star Wars game that was not linear and single player. And in the aftermath, they even shut down Visceral Games completely. Oh, how wrong they were though. Just a year later, and a new era of video game developments focusing on single player games, go figure, has been ushered in though, mostly spearheaded by the success of Sony and their endeavors in the first party single player market. Today, single-player games are most certainly relevant, important, and very successful. The fantastic and absolutely amazing God of War took the title of Game of the Year, and much to the confusion of EA, it was a single-player game. A game that sold 5 million copies in its first month, which is astounding considering that it was being sold on a single platform, the PlayStation 4. That number now exceeds 10 million. Uh huh. Sounding more like your da by the moment. Besides God of War, another award-winning single-player game this year, Spider-Man, has not only proven EA wrong once again, but has also shattered records across the board too. Spider-Man came out in September of this year and has become one of the fastest-selling games of all time, churning out 3.3 million copies and $200 million in sales in just three days. Again, on a single system. And if that wasn't enough, Red Dead Redemption 2, launching as an exclusively single-player game at launch, broke that record again, selling a mind-boggling 17 million copies in less than two weeks, which is crazy. Other games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey did well too, even when they mixed up their formulas, which had the potential to alienate many long-standing action stealth fans of the AC franchise. And those are just the big games. There's so many other success stories for single-player games this year that it blows the mind.
The success of these games shows that there is a demand for the single player experience and that it could drive profitability in a way EA does not think is possible. Video games don't need in-game stores. Live gaming services attached to the side of them and multiplayer and social elements forced upon players. They don't need any of it because the data and the sales have shown that people will go out of their way to buy a great single player game even if that is all that it offers. We don't need every game taken to a place of monetization and progressivity simply because some companies out there don't trust gamers to pony up for a high quality solo gaming experience because that's not the case. In itself, it's proof that the best of them can slash away all the hesitation from high-rise video game corporations that want to put the bottom line before the construct of a high-quality video game. When enterprises fail to see that the only thing they have to do is make a good video game, we all lose. Because that's when video games are at their best, when the heart and soul of a passionate company goes into it. It doesn't mean Assassin's Creed can't have a season pass or that Spider-Man can't have some DLC after it launches. Of course they can. Those in charge need to realize that there's a comfy middle ground of taking risk to bring a great single player game to the markets while curbing that risk with these sorts of implementations. You can trust your game and extend the product at the same time without being malicious. Without cutting content, without forcing an arbitrary multiplayer mode with pointless microtransactions inside of it, and without creating an ecosystem of live gaming that could in fact be to the detriment of the game itself. So far, Sony is the one company out there that to me has shown repeatedly that they understand the value of a great single player game, and that there is a key to opening that door. It may not be ingenuity, after all not every game needs to reinvent the wheel. I mean is God of War's combat system something truly new? Probably not, but then again does it really need to be? The key is simply quality. It means spending time on delivering an experience that is the best you can make it and brimming with the quality that a $60 price tag requires. If you've ever watched Field of Dreams and you've heard this quote, if you build it, they will come. Video games aren't baseball fields, but the principle still remains. Video gamers out there will pay premium coin for the top experiences in our industry, and it doesn't matter if they're multiplayer or single player, open world or linear, it matters that they're just good. Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. I would love to hear what you have to say regarding Sony's statements on single player games down below in the comment section. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you guys in our next video. Take care until then.